So Trinity Sunday. The Sunday that strikes fear into every minister's heart because you've got to stand up and do your yearly talk on the Trinity and try to talk about this theology that one is ultimately you get to the mystery of it and you're not going to solve it. It's, an, it's the unsolvable problem, but even that is okay. Even that's because because try, even even the thought of trying to solve the problem betrays our limited thinking about things because we always want to try to solve a problem. Well, but then. we want to try to solve like the substance of God. How how can one thing be three? <coughs> and we usually all, 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 often talk about the substance aspect of it. I mean, even. Uh, you were talking about the Nicene Creed earlier today. And, mm -hmm. You know, they've got the whole homoousius, the same stuff. Jesus right. is made out of the same stuff as God. And there's no, and you know, it, it's really does a lot of work between God and Jesus. Not so much the Holy Spirit, but still that creed really focuses there. How, what's that relationship? But even when we, the old time or the old standbys, well, the Trinity is like water. It can be steam. It can be a liquid. It can be a solid. But it's still all that's still water in different forms. I think wood such. is another one of my favorite ones. It's wood? Like the root, oh. the bark, the branch. Oh. It's all. It's all. It's still it's all, all tree. wood. It's all tree. Just different parts. But different parts. But even that. But again, that's that's still very, to me, it's still very material when trying to think of <coughs> Trinity as a, a, again, to me, it's a it's a math it's a problem. It's the how does three how does three equal well, one and one, one equals one, three, yeah. and all of that stuff. So, what's a different way to look at Trinity than oh, student of? Well, wood was my go-to, so. I feel like I've always been okay with the Trinity. I just never questioned it. Yeah, I've always just been like, yep, sure, that works. Sure. <laughs> don't, 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 just don't look at it too, just look at it obliquely. Yeah. And it'll, be, it'll all be okay. Just nod your head. No, because it's like, keep moving. I guess I don't, I have a hard time seeing what the issue is. Mm -hmm. Like I have a, it makes sense. To, I don't know. The Trinity makes sense to me. Okay. What makes sense to you? What does that mean to you? What does making sense mean yeah, to me? Yeah, what does making sense mean to you? Well, I just don't like... I have a hard time grasping why it's a hard thing for other people to wrap their heads around. In what sense? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't. God the Father, God the Son, I just the Holy Spirit, it just makes sense. It's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a part of it. Okay. If I believe in all the other hoopla, then it just makes sense that this just right. goes with it too. But when you take your theology class here in a year or whenever that is, is it the fall? I'll be done with it in a year. You yeah, I'll start, start it in the, in the fall. fall. I mean, I always warned you against when you're talking about uh, Trinity, you can't make it into a hierarchy. Right. So it can't be God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Right. That's why we have the Level triangle all, all the time. You know, and but, it's an equilateral triangle yes and and they always draw if you really look at people who really draw out that the arrows are always going in the both ways so it's it's not god down to the other two and then cross somehow or they always make sure that the arrows are going both ways i don't think i've ever seen it drawn as a triangle i've always seen it as the it's like the little 
yeah. ovals yeah. put together in a triangle form. I guess, yeah, I guess it does make a triangle, but... Where they intersect. Yeah. yeah. And is the see. intersection, is that trinity because it preserves both the unity and yet the uniqueness of That each. sounds good. <laughs> I do like that good old St. Patrick used the, the shamrock uh -huh. to describe the Trinity for the king in Ireland. That's some good trivia in the novel. There you go. But even then, the, the three leaves don't overlap in the shamrock. Yeah, they're connected at the bottom. They do, they do, do deeper. Maybe not. They're connected to a stem. Yeah, but before that, there's a little bit, because it's just like the... <laughs> I'm Irish. Okay. Let me have this one. I'll, I'll give you that one. I'm just trying to mess with you a little bit. So, I mean, I, I know, like, I think my theology professor talked about it uh, in terms of a dance, almost, where they really stressed the relational quality that that when we look at the trinity it's again not trying to solve some sort of physical puzzle but you're looking at it as the ultimate community and mm -hmm. what does that mean and then how does that because any theology any of this talk should be flowing towards something mm -hmm. it's not always just describing that and that's it we used our words to describe this Right. thing what does that then mean I think is always where you're going with theology mm -hmm. how does that then reflect back on faith because even to say that God is love and then you put that love into this community mm -hmm. and this dance and this sort of mutual and you know because they have to be like I said, it has to be able to be together, but also right. be unique, uh, not in a hierarchical way, but uh, well, it's like a level plane. Not, right, but also not, you like know, here. when we substitute words like creator, redeemer, sustainer, but the spirit has to be understood just as much creator as that, so we have to make sure we don't also delineated them by jobs or you know tasks or things that they do uh, either we've got to keep we got to make sure that even using those words will always fall short of what it is we're trying to, to describe. I think that's why people don't use the language really yeah because it's like I don't want to say it's like too complicated, but it's like, I think that's part of the reason people have a hard time with the concept of the Trinity. Mm. Cause it's like, how am I supposed to talk about it in such a way that these three things are this one thing and it's, there's equal and yada yada. Right, there's and like so all these like, rules, but no. <laughs> right, and no so solution. it's like, I think people just go, Lots we're of just what is not, not. going to talk about and it just is, and right. that's all right. And we're with gonna do it once a That's all right with us. We're gonna hit it. We're gonna watch we're our minister move on. sweat and <laughs> <coughs> worry and be filled with anxiety, and that's all right because for that sermon we'll make our grocery list. <laughs> that one sermon. Just there, that one. All the fifty-one other. Sundays we will listen we intently. We pay attention. That's the what. That's really what it should but be. But the one. Well, and well, and thinking about now, I'm trying to think about scripture mm -hmm. and what's the scripture we read yesterday to go with Trinity Sunday? I think we read something from Romans, but since I haven't looked at it. I can't. I'm gonna to have to cut all this out. That's fine. I was just. <laughs> I think we read Romans. Usually, I hate to say it's often a piece of scripture on Trinity Sunday. My experience has shown me that it's something that allows me to say the name of all three in one passage, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a 
Oh, it gives any it gives us anything deeper into what the Trinity is. Interesting. Because well, because all three are mentioned in Scripture. It's all three not are mentioned like in Scripture. Just God and Jesus. Right. There is the mention of the Spirit. Right. I mean, with John, John's Gospel probably has our most complete. Uh, do, do you say pneumo, pneumological? Theology of the Spirit mm -hmm. and, and its writing. But Trinity, I mean, that's always one of the things uh, critics will point to is it's not necessarily a, a scriptural theological doctrine. It is more of a scripture implies it rather than mm. there's a passage that really talks about it and states it. You know, Paul doesn't teach the Trinity. Right. You know, directly. But there's this sort of implication, you know, you can you can easily draw it out. And so that's been one of those questions of for those who want to question the validity of the Trinity. Right. Was it in it? Do you think the first Christians was the Trinity a big part for them? Because I know it was the Council of Nicaea that. Right, and that's three. But even years then, later. wasn't. Yeah, and it was the second meeting, not the first meeting, that added <laughs> spirit into it. Right. My feel, and I don't have any. I, yeah, I what you feel? Like? I can't offer you like evidence or whatever. My feel is no. My feel is that Trinity is a doctrine that most likely developed and I think it may have I again I feel I have no mm -hmm. I can't I can't cite any sources to you uh, but somewhere in my brain is the thinking that part of it is the um, issue of there the Shema the one God Hero yeah, Israel. hero Israel, you should have one, like, there should be no other God. Right. And, and then... so early on, there was this conflict, I think, especially as, and this is going to sound blasphemous to some folks, as Jesus kind of gained in divinity. Because mm -hmm. I, I would even say that initially Jesus was not considered or was not put on right. an equal level. Right. Um, uh, I think that's something that developed later. later. Um, and again, I know for some folks that's like, oh, how can you say such Heretical. a thing? But historically, I, I, I feel like that was more of the way it went. Yeah. Because uh, you still well, have... Well, the council leveled the, the playing field again. That was the Council of Nicaea again mm -hmm. was like... Oh, let's do this. So, I mean, you can see it somehow developed. But, right. I mean, if you look with what is the what is the Philippians uh, passage, you know, do not consider equality oh, yeah. with God as something to be exploited but empty themselves. And be, I mean, that's an early... That, but even then, it's, yeah, there's like... That's, that's an early liturgy the, of the church right. kind of thing. Um and and there's still also the kind of theology still of Jesus as advocate. Well, there's the advocate. That's that's John is the Holy Spirit yeah, the, is the advocate. advocate. But Jesus is still that connection, uh, and that you know even in John, the oneness is not necessarily like the homoousius of the later mm -hmm. Nicene, where they're the same stuff, but it's more. Uh, by then, by the time John would have been written uh, near the what end of the first century, um, you still had the if you Jesus was saying, "If you see me, you see God." You know, is is more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, again, when we talk about Jesus who has no sin, means there's no the, the the great theological statement you're saying is there's no space between Jesus and God. Not necessarily that. Right. That's not necessarily. They are one in the same. Right. 
And so I don't know, I mean, could the Trinity have developed out of that? I mean, if there's no if there's no sin, then there can be and there's no separation, doesn't that mean they're the same? I mean, that could have been part of a, a step somewhere on right. the road to the Trinity. It could have been the oh well let's just Right. Cause then you also have, you know, a question of the incarnation. I mean, the way Luke tells mm -hmm. the story, uh, or again, we're back with John's gospel. I'm sorry, not Luke. With John's gospel and uh, the word. Right, yeah. You know, the In word the was, was God. Word. And I think a lot of that kind of stuff, yeah, theological stuff, again, may be the seeds of what then became, but I'm not sure if you can really point to even John's gospel that you had a full-fledged right. Trinitarian theology it's like it's the, put together by then. At some point it just showed up. Here it is. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, theology, again, I, I, I think sometimes, uh, we've, we've mentioned this before, I think sometimes we kind of suffer under this delusion that we think it just formed and that's the way it was right. and it never changes and there's never anything that goes on with it right uh you know it never goes through uh well change because of what's happening in the world around it i mean the, if you look right. at the old testament judaism it goes through vast changes right and it's all preserved there in the Old Testament. It's not the same, you know, right, older Judaism now. and post-exilic Judaism and right. Judaism during the time of the monarchy. And, you know, it's constantly yeah, it's changing. All, yeah. and, and Christianity does as well. I, I, I think it's uh, a bit of control for those who say, no, it's never changed. There's been, it's been the one from the beginning, right. This is this how it's is, been. We hold on to the theology of the apostles, and you know, there's a direct line between what we do, <laughs> bless you, sorry, what we do and believe now, and what Jesus taught. You find that right, I think and that's it's just a, a straight line. That's a that's a false from point arrogance. A to point yeah. B. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> there was somebody in that B tradition that decided they were going to yeah. chart and oh yes they, this is how it le goes legitimate themselves by showing how oh no no we're we're the we're the pure germ we're the pure theology kind of thing uh, but the, none of that none of that it's real right christian history is a lot messier literally okay <laughs> therefore christian theology is also a lot messier messy what I think another argument that people make then is, or that people have a hard time with, is, so then, is Christianity really monotheistic? Because then you have these three. Right. Things. Yeah. And like I said, I think that's part of the, the pressure. Right. That developed. Because if you look at, if you've ever studied Islam, part of the issue in the birth of Islam and something that Muhammad struggled with was, again, the Trinity. Right. So we know as Islam was developing and in that era, because Islam is a post or, you know, comes after Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a time where Christianity was the dominant religion, and a lot of a lot of the, the development of Islam is a uh, reaction against the right. bad Christianity right. of the time and place. Yeah. And so that was, you know, the Trinity at that point was one of those sticky points and points of argument and breaking contention. Yeah. and contention. Um, so even today with Muslims, because that's part of their mm -hmm. who they are, is that you know no Trinity, and we Jesus is a great teacher and prophet, but to say right. that 
Jesus is God is blasphemous. You right. still have that kind of because it's still disconnect. Yeah. I mean, that's that's it's one of the things that makes Christians Christians and Jews Jews yeah. and you know Muslims Muslims. Bless you again. Maybe. No, it went away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an easy theology it's not a neutral theology right so how do you That's and whether this makes it in there or not but like how do you, has your view and your thought of it changed in the 20 something years you've been doing this and teaching it uh I remember when I did my MA and wrote some paper, uh, one of my big papers towards the end, the, the grad student who graded that paper, one of his big... One of his big qualms <laughs> One of his big paper. qualms with my paper. He said I was a functioning uh, Unitarian in that... Oh, that's funny. I didn't... He he felt like I did not have a a well developed Trinitarian the... Trinitarian theology that I had a huh. a overly developed Unitarian theology, right. you know, the oneness of God and right. the, not not the Trinitarian thing. Interesting. But that's so uh, that's the only thing I can point to. I'm kind of I hate to say I'm kind of like you as well. I I was harassing you. It was at the start, but <clears throat> Trinity is not one of the those theologies that really I spend a whole lot of time in yeah. and dealing with. Uh, I have to deal with it once a year, <laughs> well, but truly. Will... But it's not something that I think connects to me personally yeah. or as part of my own faith or as something that I think I feel that I, I somehow need to make sure you have a, for the people I teach and lead. Right. If you don't, you've got to have a great functioning Trinitarian understanding. And if right. you don't, somehow you're the lesser for it. I'm not, that's not Well, I'm trying to think, like, if I've ever heard any, like, anybody who has had a strong Trinitarian, yeah. like, I... No, I think it's one of those things that always, it's, I don't know. It's always God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. It's, they've right. always been together for me. There's never been a, well, you have God, and then you have Jesus, and then you have the Holy Spirit. It's right. like they've all just been together. I mean, as I'm sitting here thinking back, I think, Maybe maybe that paper or that time in my life reflects more of trying to reconnect with the word God um, mm -hmm. and to understand God better because of maybe more personal experience of of you know you meet Christians who are who are basically all about all about the Jesus, but then they're very atrophied on the other two. You know, right. it's not necessarily it's all about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and and then there's also those who are all Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, right. Holy Spirit, and are, you know the it's other like two are atrophied. And, yeah, and I feel like maybe maybe for me at that time, as I'm sitting here thinking, I needed to beef up my my god well, part. you needed to wrestle with god more and i you. needed to and 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 so i tended at that time probably to focus and talk more about god right than the than, other two. than bring in a lot of the others but mm -hmm. i i think now i've maybe have balanced out some uh just over time i tend to focus much more i think on the like we were saying, that community aspect of it. Right. But that's also, again, where am I in, in my own thinking and, and faith? A lot of it is about community and somehow this equality of community and not, right. not, a, hierarchy not a hierarchy of a community 
you know, it's a community that gives and takes and you know, I'm understanding that dance a little better. Right. Where we, we learn from one the another, flow. we are challenged. Yeah. You know. Um, Interesting. Okay. All this theology should be working to build up somebody's faith. Right. And, and, and faith isn't about believing or demanding that our theology be watertight. And if it's not right. watertight, then then it's not true. I think, again, that's a, you're going down the wrong road. Right. And especially if you can't, if you can't admit. That, well, Jesus yeah, is in the boat. It doesn't have to be watertight. <laughs> <laughs> but there's holes in our theology. Right. You can find holes. You can poke holes in it. It, it's not a it's not the perfect system mm -hmm. but I don't have faith it's just like if I if I if I'm all about belief in the Bible then that becomes bibliolatry right and if I have belief in my perfect theological system then that becomes then you're like believing in your perfect theological system right and that becomes right. idolatry as well and so this is where you get into the experience of the living God, which still gets us back to Trinity, because I think there's a there's an aspect of how do you experience the living God? Right. But said the professors, Trinity is not a you're you're not the center of the Trinity. Your experience of God is not. However, it, it, and it's all that stuff. I just remember all the conversations were but. Right. However. Right. Well, now I'm thinking about, I have that book on my windowsill, God of the Living, uh -huh. and now I really want to go through it and figure out what it has what to it? say about. So our theology is helpful language. It's helpful to give yeah. us meaning to our experiences or to push us in our faith but it is not our faith we can't it's right. not the faith right um, and, and, the, and then I always default back to that great line in our book of uh, order which is you know folks this is how we believe mm -hmm. but we don't claim it's the only way the, to believe yeah. but this is this is how we understand things we... so chill yeah. And let's let's believe so and, and live out our faith. You know, if these are the things we believe, then what does that mean then to how we live out our faith? Right. I think is is the ultimate bottom line for a lot of this stuff. Right. Well, then it makes me. I don't know. Then I go back and always I think about. Well, so then, what is the character of God? But it's not just what is the character of God. It's. How does the character of God then? come back to, to your faith and how right. you live out your faith. Right. Because I can say great things about God all the time, but isn't that, was that one of the John letters? If you say God is love, but you hate, who, who, but you hate your brother and sister. If you say that, yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the Greek passages we have to do. If you say that God is love, but you don't have love. Then you really don't believe that God then is you, love. Yeah. You know, just not there. How, how can you love God whom you haven't seen if you can't love your brother or sister who you have seen? Who you see all the time. And I think, yeah. that, I think that's one of those, I, I think that's a great insightful statement and, and says a lot about where faith ought to be. Mm -hmm. We get caught up in the, do you believe the right things? Do right. you hold the right view? And that we think that's what's most important. And, and that's, it's really not. That's not. That's not it. So Trinity is helpful. Is helpful. It's important. It's who we are. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not ever going to be some solid understanding. Right. It's, it's never. You're never going to go. Always, ah. It's <laughs> always going to. Hopefully, it should push you towards thinking about God in a certain way. Right. And challenge you and your thoughts about things um, and then like I said maybe you will find a way that it 
be, it comes to live out. And mm -hmm. Maybe it would just be something you say, Trinity, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. But that's it. Oh yeah, okay. Let's 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 look at this over here now. <laughs> I wouldn't get too hung up on it. Yeah. I guess is my ultimate. No, I think that's... My ultimate pastoral advice. I think that's fair. Don't get hung up on don't, it. Don't hang your hat on... Don't hang your hat on it. On that one. It's important. Know yeah. it. Understand it the best you can. Right. And then move on. Well, I think that's the key. Understand it the best you can. Yeah. I think don't just don't just be like, yeah, nope, we're not doing that. But I think yeah. understand it the best you can. Blind eyes never see the light. Things no, blind, blind eyes. eyes. Oh, it can never see the light. That's right. Blind eyes can never see the light. Period. Don't even try to question me on that one. <laughs> oh. Coming down hard on you now. Oh. Trinity. Check. Check. Okay. I hope we do this next year <laughs> to, so we can to see what the difference is. Yeah. How we talk about it again. Yeah. You'll be much more learned next year. I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> and that sounds like a great note to finish on this Monday with the ever learning Meg. And also the ever-learning Tom. That's right. Don't tell you I know it all because I don't, even though I act like it. So, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. And who knows what we'll talk about. We don't know yet. Because we're done with our special Sundays. Yeah, we're moving into ordinary time. Ordinary time. And we'll just have an ordinary conversation. We'll talk about something ordinary. I, yeah. Cool. <laughs>